So 13.1, we're going to talk about sequences and summation. So sequences are just a list of numbers that can increase, decrease, but have some type of pattern. So here, looking at our numbers, to get from one to the next, what are we doing? We're adding what? Five. So this would be a sequence. And then sequences have a formula. We're going to talk about that in the next section in 3.2, how to come up with the formula. But here, our formula would be 5n. Because for our first term, when you plug in 1 into n, you'd get 5. For our second term, when you plug in 2 into n, you'd get 10. So each sequence is going to have a formula, but we'll talk about that in 13.2, how to come up with the formulas. So let's look at example one. It says find the first five terms and the hundredth term of the sequence defined by each. We're going to find the first three terms since we don't have a lot of time today. And the one hundredth term. So starting with A. To find the first three terms, we're going to plug in, or to find the first term, we're going to plug in one. So A sub one is equal to two times one minus one. So two times one would be two, and two minus one is one. So our first term is one. To find a sub two, we're going to plug in two. So we have two times two minus one. Two times two would be four, and four minus one is three. So our next term would be three. To find our third term, we're going to plug in three. So two times three would be six, and six minus one Five. Now let's find the hundredth term. What do you think we plug in to find the hundredth term? A hundred. So two times one hundred minus one. Two times a hundred would be two hundred. And two hundred minus one is one ninety nine. Let's do the same thing. Let's do C. So let's find our first term. So we're going to plug in 1 into all of the ends. So we have 1 over 1 plus 1, which would be 1 over 2. So our first term is 1 half. To find our second term, we have 2 over 2 plus 1. So 2 over 3. To find our third term, we plug in 3. So 3 over 3 plus 1 would be 3 over 4. And then to find our 100th term, that would be 100 over 100 plus 1, which would be 100 over 101. So our 100th term would be 100 over 101. Any questions there? Lastly, let's do D. So same thing, let's start by plugging in one. So we have negative one to the first power over two to the first power. Negative one to the first power would be negative one and two to the first power is just two. So our first term is negative one half. When we plug in 2, we get negative 1 to the second power over 2 to the second power. What's negative 1 to the second power? Positive 1. And 2 to the second power? 4. So the next term would be 1 fourth. And then our third term, negative 1 to the third power over 2 to the third power. What's negative 1 to the third power? negative 1, and 2 to the third power, 8. So negative 1 over 8. To 
final hundredth term, you do the same thing. So negative 1 to the 100th power over 2 to the 100th power. What's negative 1 to the 100th power? It'd be 1, positive 1. Notice here how odd exponents on the negative 1 make it negative 1. Even exponents make it positive. So 100 is an even number. That would make it a positive 1. And I don't have my calculator on me, so we'll just leave it as 2 to the 100th power. So this would be positive 1 over 2 to the 100th power. It'd be some really big number when you put it in the calculator. Any questions here? In example 2, we're going to find the nth term of a sequence. I'm going to skip this for now. We'll come back to it on Thursday. Um, I don't think that there's many questions like this on the web assigned. There might be one. So you can just try to come up with a sequence. But in 13.2, we're going to come up with, we have an equation to come up with our sequence. So we'll have a formula for that. So it'll be easier once we learn the next section. So we're going to skip this for now. Next thing we're going to do is find the partial sum of a sequence. So we're just going to be adding the numbers in our sequence together. So if we had a sequence like 1, 2, well, let's say 1, 3, 5, 7. It'll say find the partial sum of the first four terms of your sequence. You just add all of the numbers together. So in example five, it says find the partial sum. So you want to find the first four partial sums of the nth partial sum of the sequence given by 1 over 2 to the power of n. So we just have to find what all of our terms are. So for our first term, and then add them together. 1 over 2 to the first power would be 1 half. So our first partial sum would just be 1 half. Let's find our second term. We plug in 2, so 1 over 2 to the second power, that would be 1 fourth. So for our first partial sum, that's just 1 half. For the second one, we add the first two terms together, so that would be 1 half plus 1 fourth. For the third partial sum, we add all three terms together, so we have to plug in 3. So 1 over 2 to the power of 3. That'd be 1 over 8. So for our third partial sum, we have 1 half plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth. And then lastly, for our fourth partial sum, we need to plug in 4. So 1 over 2 to the fourth power would be 1 over 16. So 1 half plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth plus 1 over 16. On web assignment, when it asks for this, you'll actually have to add them together. But just for the sake of time, this would just be how you do it. Lastly, we're going to see this little squiggly E symbol. This is called sigma notation. It's just a notation for the sum of your sequence. So this just means when you add up all the terms. So it'll give you from one to another number, you're going to add them, add all your numbers in your sequence together. So this just means sum, which means that we're going to have to add. So in example 7a, I'm going to do it over here. So we're going to plug in numbers 1 to 5 and just add them all up together. So we're plugging it into K. So we're going to plug in 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So starting with 1, we have 1 squared, which would be 1. So we have 1 plus, when we plug in 2, we have 2 squared, which is 4. So 1 plus 4. Next, we have 3 squared. 3 squared is 9. Then 4 squared, 
would be 16, so we're going to add that to our list. And then 5 squared would be 25. Do we need to keep going? No, 5 is the last number on top here, so that's where we stop. So it'll give you your starting number and your stopping number. So you always start plugging in with the number on the bottom and end plugging in with the number on top. And then we're just going to add all of these together. So 1 plus 4 plus 9 plus 16 plus 25 would be 55. So that would be our answer. Yes. Yes. All right, let's do D. Actually, we'll do B also. For B, what are we going to start plugging in? For B, what do we start plugging in? What's our starting point? Three. We're going to start by plugging in three. So we have one over three plus, what would we plug in next? For B, we want to plug in three all the way to five. So what comes in between three and five? Four. So we're going to plug in three, four, and five. So when we plug in four, we get one over four plus one over five. And then you'll want to find a common denominator and add all of these together. Let's do C. What do we start plugging in with C? Five. So we want to plug in five. We start there, and then we plug in everything on our way to ten. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So when we plug in five, we just get five. Plus, when we plug in six, there's no math to do here. It's just the number. So plus six, plus seven, plus eight, plus nine, plus ten. <clears throat> and then we want to add all of these together. Yeah. When you add them up, you get 45. So 45 would be our answer. All right, last one. Let's do D. What would we plug in first? One. What would we plug in second? Two. We're going to plug in one all the way to six. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Do I have anything to plug one into here? Anything to plug it into? No. So when we technically plug in one, what's our answer going to be? Two. Plus, when we plug in two, what's our answer going to be? Two. Plus, when we plug in three, what's our answer going to be? When we plug in three, are we plugging it in to anything? So what's our answer going to be? Two. Plus, when we plug in four, what's our answer going to be? Two. When we plug in five? And when we plug in six? So two plus two plus two plus two plus two plus two would be 12.